You all are good. You know that? We're going to pray over in our service and pray for this box of names. If you have a prayer request or you know of someone who has asked for prayer, do not hesitate to put their name in this box. Because as often as we pray, we pray for this box of names and every prayer request. And I know this. God has answered a lot of prayers out of this box. And some he's answered that I'm not even aware of. And therefore, if you know a prayer that you maybe have put in the box or somebody else has put in the box that God has answered, you need to let us know so we can say, thank you, Lord, for answering that prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come this morning with thankful hearts that you made it possible for us to be here in this place, this hour, that we might truly worship you from the bottom of our hearts, that we might truly praise your name and lift it up, that others around might be able to see and know that you are our God, that we worship you, we serve you in whatever way that you would have us to serve. Lord, now we ask your blessings upon each one that is here. We thank you for sending visitors our way. We thank you for this box of names and every prayer request that's in it because, Lord, we know that this box is here because of you. And we thank you for every prayer that you have answered. We just lay all of the other prayers that's in there unanswered before your throne of grace. In your time and according to your plan, we know, Lord, that you'll take care of those prayers. Because we know you are in the prayer answering business. And we've seen the results of the names that have been put in there. And of the prayers that have been offered up. Lord, well, we just pray now that you'll be with us through this service. That everything that we say and do the songs that we sing, the prayers that we offer up, Lord, will be to glorify you. And we Father, bless God and direct us for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Take your Bibles and turn to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And our scripture reading will be beginning with verse 30, 30 through 40 of the 11th chapter of Hebrews. We need God. We'll say that again. We need God. As often as you pray, pray for God to be in your life, day in and day out. Pray for God to be in this church every Sunday of this new year. Pray that God will be with every secret prayer pal that we have. Pray that you'll be praying for your secret prayer pal, as well as his box of names. Because we do need God. I have a few questions for you this morning. And I want you to think about these questions as I read them all. The first question that I have is, can you lose your taste while on an airplane? Also, do you think that Flannery O'Connor really taught a chicken to walk backwards? Do you believe that six minutes of hard exercise a day is all you need for good health? <laughs> okay. Do any of you do the silly walk? Have you heard about the silly walk? I wish I could do it. <clears throat> I don't think my leg will go that high. And if I did, I'd probably collapse 
that's because of my back. How many here believe all we need is faith? How many here believe that all we need is faith? I don't have the answer to all these questions I just asked, but why would you lose your taste on an airplane? Why would you teach a chicken to walk backwards? We need to think about those questions probably a little bit. But I want to say that all I need is God. All we need is God. I want us to read this uh, scripture this morning. And that's the Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning with verse 30. <clears throat> but because you see, faith begun with Moses. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. Now I'm reading out the new uh, King James Version Bible this morning, and it's about to come apart, so I'm hoping you'll stay with us as we read this scripture. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Verse 32, and what more shall I say for the same world for this time, I can't read this one. For the time would, te would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Sam Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence, quench the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to fight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. Verse 37, they were stoned and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. Verse 37, they were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They, with, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. Verse 39, here's a couple of key verses. Might have to read them twice. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So reads God's Word. And I can't help but read that 39th and 40th verse again. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having promised something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. And I hope that your trans 
translation of your scripture reads pretty much the same as that one. But we're going to talk about we need God this morning. Everyone here needs God. You see, this faith thing begins with Moses. And you'll know the story of Moses when he was born, was to be spared from uh, being slaughtered, and so he was put in a bush, in a basket, in the river, and he was found by Pharaoh's daughter. But because of Moses' faith in the Hebrew God, he didn't want to have no part of being called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. And so he left that situation to go and suffer with his people, God's people. It mentions in this scripture that faith came in, in the form of when the walls, when Jericho, the walls of Jericho fell down, you remember how they marched around for seven full days and the walls came tumbling down? That's not a song, isn't it? We'll always get songs into our messages, don't we? Somehow or another, songs are a way of worshiping God. And so when we read the scripture, that's a way of worshiping God. Also, when we talk about faith and we say, look, at the scripture when it talks about the faith of those in the past, how the things that they accomplished. It says, by faith, harlot Rahab did not perish with those who didn't believe. And then the writer goes on to talk about men such as Gideon. We see Gideon's faith. We see Samson's faith as he destroyed the temple. Because God gave him the strength to do that simple thing. I think that would take a lot of faith on, on Samson's part. David, remember David? King who became king. Then Samuel, who followed God when God spoke to him. And there are many more. They all needed God in their life. Daniel, Daniel in the lion's den. Remember the scripture said, he shut the mouths of lions and kept those from the fiery furnace. Remember the three guys in the furnace that was blazing? And yet there was a third person walking, and a fourth person walking around in that fire. They needed God. Billy Graham needed God. I was looking at a thing on my phone that popped up either this morning or sometime. It said that when Billy Graham had just completed a meeting somewhere in the United States, maybe you all saw it, and it was on my, my cell phone, um, and I couldn't help to see it and read it, but it said that Billy Graham had come out and, and waiting for him was a big, long, black limousine. The fellow was going to drive him to his hotel, I guess. And so he said, you know, I've been doing this for X amount of years. I don't know whether it was 80 or 70 or what it was. But he said, I've never driven a limousine. Would it be all right if I drive this limousine? The driver said, well, sure. He got out and let Billy Graham now, this may be a true story, I don't know, but it's off of my phone. <coughs> <coughs> and so he let him drive his limousine. And as they were driving down the road, <coughs> they come, <coughs> excuse me, they came by a policeman standing along, standing along the side of the road. I guess he had one of those cameras, you know. And he caught Billy Graham driving this limousine about 70 uh, miles an hour in the 55 mile an hour zone. So he pulled him over. And when he walked up to, <coughs> and Billy rolled down the window, he looked in, he saw Billy Graham sat down. He said, oh, excuse me. He went and got back in his car <coughs> and he called, he called his boss. And he 
said, I, I don't know what to do. He said, I know sometimes we allow uh, uh, interesting people or, uh, to, to get by. You know, he said, I don't know what to do. This is a pretty important person, and I don't know whether to, what to do about whether I write him a ticket or let him go. His boss said, well, is he a vice president? And the policeman said, no, he's more important than that. And he said, well, is he president? And the policeman said, no, I think he's a little more important than that. <clears throat> he said, well, <clears throat> who is he? He said, I don't know, but he, he must be God because he's got Billy Graham driving for him. I don't know how that fits with the Billy Graham here, but Billy Graham had to have a lot of faith to preach and go all over the world as he did with the gospel. Charles Hadley Spurgeon is another great man that had to have a lot of faith to do what he, write as many books as he wrote, preach as many messages that he did. And yes, we need God. In verse 35, the scripture talks about mothers. who lost loved ones. That was brought back to life. And you know, Wednesday night, we're probably going to get in to one of those ladies where it talks about her son was given back to her after he had died. So you may want to take part in our uh, Bible study Wednesday night about Elijah. Because it happened during Elijah's time in Kings. And in this scripture, it talks about one dude um, that received her son back. And I know there are other ones in the scripture. And we might think, how can you believe such a story like that? How can we believe a scripture that says women received their dead raised to life again? That's verse 35. You have to study some of these scriptures, and sometimes we wonder, but you know what? Just as these mothers needed God, we need God as well. Because today, we wonder about a lot of things that's happening in our world. Churches are being burned or destroyed by bombs, and so they don't exist anymore. Police officers are shot almost on a daily basis around our country for no reason at all. School children in the shootings that we've had who are trying to study and learn and become part of society. Teenagers are killed again almost on a daily basis. It's all that you hear. What's the answer to all of the turmoil that's happening in our world today? God's the answer. We need God. I want you to look at verse 39 and 40, which we read twice. It says, all of these, through faith, did not receive the promise. Does that mean that we're here this morning? because we're expecting a great promise from God. It probably sounds that way, doesn't it? But you have to read some of the footnotes and think about that for a while because it goes on to say, God, having provided something better for us, we're always interested in something better, aren't we? And this morning, that better is what God has promised. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. Every one that we mentioned this morning had faith that God was going to take care of them, do that which 
Daniel wouldn't have been in the lion's den if he hadn't had faith that God was going to deliver. The three men would not have been in the fiery furnace if they had not had faith that God was going to deliver. They had the faith. They had God in their lives. And God did provide for them. Just as God has provided today for you and I. He gave us his son. His only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the 40th verse. That's what God provided for us. That doesn't mean we don't need God. That means we need Jesus in our life. And Jesus is God. We have to have the faith. You know, I'm telling a lot of people we have these fraud cards. And I don't have a pocket, so I don't have one in my pocket right now. And uh, on the fraud cards, we say fully rely on God. And I give those cards out, and I say, well, you know, it's not the card. It's not the fraud card that makes a difference, but it's the faith you have in God. That brings about whatever your need in life might be. The frog card just reminds us that we need God. One last scripture and we're going to close. Matthew the 17th chapter and the 20th verse. Some people will say, well I have faith. But it is enough faith. Is it enough faith to get us through what we're going to go through? You know, I don't even know what tomorrow is going to hold. Matthew the 17th chapter and the 20th verse. 21st and 22nd verse. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you all know how big a mustard seed is, don't you? You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will be, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So, we got to have faith. we got to have God. To do that, we're going to have to pray more. We're going to fast more. And then nothing will be impossible. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here, to feel your presence, to hear your voice as it speaks to us. Lord, we just pray that you'll use us, you'll guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Build our faith even stronger than it is now. Be with those who need to grasp a hold of that faith. Lay hold upon it. Have you in their lives. And that will only come as they open their heart and ask for you to come in. Father, we just pray now for this invitation time that there is someone here that has a need this morning that you're calling upon them to accept. We pray, Lord, that they will move out and make that decision. All of this, Heavenly Father, we pray as to your honor and glory. For to Jesus' name we pray. Amen.